This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Five portrait photography tips you'll wish you knew early on. Number one, break the cycle. When you're taking a portrait of a person, whether they are professional models or not, people have a tendency to do what comes naturally to them. For some people, they love to smile in front of the camera and they'll give you the same smile with 50 different head tilts that progressively get more and more stale as the shoot wears on. Sometimes they give you the same blue steel look shot after shot. And before you know it, you've taken a hundred photos that essentially all look pretty much the same. Catching this during a photo shoot is key. So when you see that someone is giving you the same expression over and over, it's really important to give them uplifting words. Maybe saying something like, wow, these last few shots look awesome. I have an idea. Let's try fill in the blank. Try something else, anything else. Maybe show them some other portraits with expressions and moods that you want them to try out. But above all, keep it fun and upbeat and you'll see that breaking the cycle of similar expressions is an easy one to overcome. Number two on my list is to learn what various light modifiers actually do. When I first started in photography, I really wanted to get into beauty photography. So naturally, I went out and I tried to find the right lighting modifier to make that happen. I searched online and this like really crazy thing happened. I found this guy right here, a beauty dish. And this beauty dish, you would think match made in heaven, right? Mission accomplished. Not so fast. My first time using this modifier went really well and gave me the look that I was actually trying to go for. Second time out, I noticed that the lighting was really making the person's skin look a little bit harsh. So I ended up using one of my other light modifiers to get me through the shoot. The next shoot after that was even worse. And right away, I started to second guess my purchase for this uh, beauty dish that wasn't making everyone look beautiful like it says in the name. Here's the thing, not everyone is going to look great when they are lit with a beauty dish. Not everyone is gonna be great being lit by an umbrella or whatever other modifiers that you can think of. What's important is to try out as many modifiers early on and identify how they work so that you'll know which one to use based on the person or the people that are in front of you. Some people will look awesome with a beauty dish, others with an Okta, so on and so forth. Nothing beats experience when it comes to using different light modifiers. So the earlier on that you start learning, the better off you're gonna be. Before we continue with my list, I wanna take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Professional Photographers of America. You've probably heard me talk about PPA in my past videos and their $15,000 worth of equipment insurance that's included with your membership. Well, starting May 1st, your benefits just got even better. With your membership, you now can get full replacement coverage with a flat $350 deductible, or you can repair your equipment with a flat $50 deductible. You get this along with their data loss recovery services, access to their library of educational videos, as well as their customizable contracts and agreements. Check out the link in the description of this video and use the code for a special discount on your membership. Join a community of over 30,000 photographers and enjoy all of the benefits that PPA has to offer. At number three on my list, and this one can honestly make or break your journey as a portrait photographer, and that's to avoid what I call the feedback rabbit hole. When you're starting out, it's natural to wanna to get feedback from other photographers and from the public at large. Hearing from other people that your work is really good and that you've got talent, it can really make you feel good. On the other hand, hearing from other people that your work isn't so good um, or that it sucks <laughs> will likely have a longer lasting effect, making you doubt yourself, which isn't where you want to be. Early on, I used to post my work in photography groups on Facebook, photography message boards, and pretty much anywhere else where I could get feedback on the work that I was creating. It never failed that even if I had 100 people, let's just say, that are saying that the image was good, it was that one negative comment that always stood out and impacted me the most. Sometimes I would get a lot of positive feedback on my work, not realizing that in actuality, it wasn't all that good, which also held me back from growing as an artist. All of this to say that it's really important not to fall into the rabbit hole of needing people's feedback on your work. 
As a photographer and an artist, you should always be your own worst critic. The important thing is to train your eyes to see the things that are good in your photo, as well as identifying those parts of the photo that could use some work. If you want feedback, get it from a source that has good intentions and that wants to see you succeed. Number four on my list is to avoid trends. I would say the majority of photographers who are just getting started will do at least one trendy type of photo shoot at some point in their career. I'm going to go through a short list of trends and I want you to let me know in the comments if you've ever done any of these and let me know if I missed any that are like super common. Okay, here we go. Selective color, where your photo is black and white but one or more elements within the photo are in color. Photo shoots on or near train tracks, which I will say are not legal in most places and it's very dangerous, don't do it. Fairy light portraits. If you don't know what I'm talking about, head over to Instagram and let me know how many of these types of photos you see. These are just a few and I could probably make an entire video talking about some of these trends. Anyway, so why do I say that you should avoid doing these trends early on? There's a few reasons for this. One would be that these trends have been photographed countless times, and it's really difficult, if not impossible, to bring a unique spin to the genre. Your work will always be compared to others who might have done it with more skill and technique, and it just makes those images look like generics of those photos. I also think that shooting the trendy stuff leads you down a bit of a rabbit hole where you end up shooting other trendy things which will keep you from growing your own unique creative style. For that reason alone, I would avoid those trends and I'd recommend focusing on expressing yourself creatively using your own ideas and concepts. Take some of the elements that make those trends interesting like using leading lines and finding and creating interesting lighting. It's an exercise that you will carry with you throughout the entirety of your portrait photography journey. Next up on my list of things I wish I knew before I started, that is to embrace longer focal lengths. As I've taught workshops for newer photographers over the years, I've noticed it was pretty common that I would see photographers who were using lenses between 16 millimeters and 55 millimeters for portraiture, maybe some of them with an 85 millimeter lens here and there, but very few would have longer focal lengths above 100 millimeters. Don't get me wrong, those lenses definitely have a place in portrait photography, but I would really encourage you to put something like a 70 to 200 millimeter lens towards the top of your buying list as soon as you get started. You'll find just like I did after a few years of taking portraits that those longer focal lengths really flatter people's faces and they help you to avoid distorting their proportions. If you watch my videos, you probably already know that I love shooting portraits anywhere from 85 millimeters all the way up to 150 millimeters. In some situations, I'll even shoot with even higher focal lengths, so long as I have the space to back up and capture everything within the frame. These are just a few of the tips that I wish I knew before I started. And if you wanna learn more about portrait photography, then you'll definitely wanna check out this video that you see here on the screen that I handpicked just for you. I'll see you there.